Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the introduction, Stuart. And I also want to thank you and Devin for inviting me to hold tonight's Trading Psychology webinar. And of course, I will do my best to make tonight worthwhile for everyone. But first things first, uh, like with everything in life, there are things that need to be managed. So in the unlikely event that I should get disconnected, just wait for me to reconnect. Um, Devin will be in the room to look after you guys anyway. And if you want to ask a question, simply type it into the chat box at the left hand corner of your screen, I believe. And you're welcome to send your questions through as we progress. Um, I will answer them at the end of the presentation though. And one last bit of risk management before we get started, the also beloved general advice disclaimer. I will have to read it out to you guys because um, fonts are fairly small, so there might be people with bad eyesight. Okay, so trading involves the risk of loss. <laughs> we all know that, don't we? Uh, this presentation is for educational purposes only and should not be solely relied upon as a recommendation or invitation to enter into a particular transaction or to apply a particular trading strategy. It is also not intended to be a substitute for professional counseling, therapy or medical treatment, nor is it intended to diagnose or treat any psychological condition. You should not engage in trading unless you understand the nature of the relevant markets, the rules and the application of these rules to the strategy or strategies you are trading, the products and the full extent of your exposure to risk of financial loss. The information contained in this webinar has been prepared without taking into account the objectives, financial situations or needs of any particular attendee and, because of that, the attendee should, before acting on any information, consider the appropriateness of the information, having regard to their own personal objectives, financial situation and needs, and must seek professional advice. By joining this webinar you do so at your own will, and in doing so, waive liability to any claims against the host, presenter, and any associated organizations and people. If you agree with everything on this disclaimer, please feel free to continue on the journey with us. If you disagree for whatever reason at any point, then now would be a good time for us to part ways. Okay, everyone's still online, that's great. So, a little bit about me. I think many of you know me either personally from previous seminars and webinars, and uh, some actually, well, some of my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients are online. Hi, that's great to see you guys. And some might only have heard about me, but for those of you who are new to my work, here's just a little bit of background about myself. Um, I started trading in the year 2000 when I attended my first weekend course on options trading. Uh, believe it or not, we didn't have CFDs as yet in Australia. And today I purely trade CFDs on indices and forex. Uh, whilst I have a few longer term positions running, my strengths are primarily in scalping and day trading. And apart from my business degree and of course financial planning and RG146 certifications, I am an accredited life coach and also master of neurolinguistic programming or NLP for short. And I also studied Ericksonian hypnosis. But I'm using a lot of other modalities in my coaching techniques as well, depending on what the trader's individual challenges and situations are. But please note, I'm not a qualified psychologist. I chose to go down the path of coaching and training instead. And the difference is in coaching and training, we are more solution focused. We work on how to develop better behavioral strategies and attitudes that are more useful so you can achieve better results. Whereas psychologists, they love to go down the path of exploring what happened in your childhood. So far, I have been trading and training in propriety trading groups, boutique hedge funds and worked with a lot of traders like yourself, who most probably primarily trade from home part-time or full-time. I can't remember where I read that, but according to Lex Van Dam, the famous hedge fund manager from the TV show Million Dollar Traders, trading on your own at home is one of the hardest ways of trading because there's no support team at all, you know, you don't have IT support and most importantly, you don't have a risk manager who takes you out when you have reached your risk limit, right? So um, that's why trading from home is so much more challenging than being in a professional environment and trading for an institution or a prop firm. My clients are pretty much from all across the scale, um, traders who just start out on their trading journey and don't want to waste time trying to figure it all out by themselves. Um, traders who have already been trading for a few years and still searching for their edge to succeed, as well as professional traders who are already successfully trading and um, maybe they're eager to learn more or keep their edge. And then there are some who maybe go through a little bit of a tough time at the moment and they look for support to get out of that hole. That's when traders usually consult my coaching services. 
Now today's topic is probably one of the challenges in trading that traders get most frustrated about. Trading discipline. Or rather, three steps on how to develop your trading discipline. And what I have lined up for you today is a few insights into why traders find it so hard to be and stay disciplined. This is an important topic because certainly in my experience of trading and coaching, this can be very eroding for a trader's self-confidence. And so that is often a point when traders start doubting themselves and the vicious circle of making bad trading decisions begins right there, often ending up in blown up accounts. But not to worry, there is a cure for it. And tonight I will also present to you some thoughts and ideas on how you can put an end to this vicious circle and build and sustain a healthier profit loss ratio instead. And you do that by applying a three step process that leads to developing better trading behaviors and better habits and consequently improving your trading discipline and trading results. But please be aware guys, this is not magic. It does take time and it does take work. It all depends on how much work is required for you personally, um, depending on you know, what your cir personal circumstances are at this stage in your life, and also how much time you are able to commit. But if you do the work, I guarantee you will be able to tremendously improve your trading results. And I will also share with you insights from some of the trader clients I have worked with over the last seven years and how they learned to manage themselves and how they got over the challenges. And before we delve into, delve into the topic of discipline, I just want to clarify for you what trading psychology is actually all about. Psychology is defined as the scientific study of the human mind and its functions, especially those affecting behavior in a given context, and the mental characteristics or attitude of a person or group. And you can see how perfectly that fits into trading. So trading psychology is a scientific study of how the human mind affects our behaviors and stuffs up our trading results. And once you understand how the human mind works and how specifically the mind can stuff up your trading profits and your trading results, then you can do something about it. Discipline is a major challenge for people, not only in trading, but in most areas of life. Just think of people who want or need to lose weight for health reasons or athletes who train for the Olympics and have to get up at four o'clock in the morning and train while keeping a full-time job. Almost every area in life is affected by discipline. And yet, most people are not really clear what discipline means and how to get on top of discipline and how to be successful. You see, it's really interesting. During the assessment session, I asked traders two questions. Number one, what stops you from making more profits? And the second question is, what stops you from losing less? And the answer is always the same lack of discipline. When traders describe their trading experience, it always reminds me of Sisyphus from the Greek mythology, who as a uh, Greek mythology, who as a punishment had to roll a massive rock up the hill just to helplessly watch it roll back down again. And like traders who make great profits and feel helpless when giving it all back in one losing trade and having to start from scratch again. I also receive a lot of emails from traders who are really discouraged because they do have a trading methodology that is proven to work and still just they don't seem to be able to stay in the profit zone. Once again they say it's because of lack of discipline because I don't follow my trading system no matter how hard I try. But this is where their understanding of discipline stops. I can see that because there's often something in the email that indicates how hard they have been trying to control their behavior with willpower and force. But of course, they don't succeed because it takes a little bit more finesse. Here are some examples of um, what traders usually experience. They say things like, every time I get out of a trade too early and miss a great profit, I get so annoyed that I jump right back into it and now it's a bad impulse trade and I lose all the profits again. Or a common one, last time I got out of the trade right before it reversed. So I got out at a loss when I could have gotten out at a great profit. So this time, the loss became larger than I intended it to be because I was holding it in the hope it might come back like it did last time, but it didn't. Or you might hear traders say, every time I'm finally in a profitable trade, I'm so worried about losing the profits again that I get out of my trade too early. In the moment it feels good to bank the money, but then I feel that pinch of regret again when I could have made so much more. Now all of these situations are examples of what traders mean when they talk about lack of discipline. And I'm sure you recognize yourself in at least some of them. 
What do all those situations have in common? An action was taken as a result of how they feel and think, and not based on a trader's rational and logical analysis. And then there is another common situation that mostly full-time traders experience. What happens to them is that pretty much as soon as the market opens, the traders prepared and ready to make money, got to pay the bills, right? So whilst monitoring the market, and before they even know it, within the first half an hour often, as if being operated by an invisible force, their finger clicks on the mouse button and they find themselves in an impulse trade that is not based on their trading methodology. And sometimes this trade works out well, but most of the time it doesn't. But what is usually happening is that you find yourself in a trade with a really poor entry point early in the day. You hold on to it and try to fix it because the day has just started and a lot can still happen, right? Or at least that is how you justify to yourself. And then after riding the trade, sometimes for most of the day, sometimes even into the night, watching it like a hawk, hoping for it to come back, you get to the point where you just can't take it anymore and you eventually give up and you take the loss. After that, you're feeling exhausted and defeated, realizing how many other high probability opportunities you have missed in the meantime. And this bad feeling is then carrying on over into the rest of your trading and into the next day because by now you're so tired that you are unable to identify other good trading opportunities. Even if they are there, your brain will not filter them through. There have actually been a lot of studies around lack of sleep and has been proven with MRI scans of the brain that lack of sleep inhibits the functioning of certain parts of the brain. And behavioral studies have also shown that when you are tired and you suffer from lack of sleep, that you're actually prone to taking on more risk than if you're well rested. And once again, that means that traders are more prone to jump into trades or put on too big positions for their account size, so make all the common mistakes. The trick here is to actually recognize that you are not in the zone, but that you're rather feeling annoyed and defeated and now you need to have a good mental strategy on hand that leads you right back into your zone. One reason, well, what I found is um, often the, the um, reason for this situation is that full-time traders at the beginning of their career, they feel guilty for living their dream and they feel, need, they feel the need to justify whatever it is they feel guilty about by working really, really hard. So they put too much pressure on themselves and that proves to be counterproductive. And one last scenario that I think has happened to every single trader on this planet, you have a super profitable start to your trading session. It feels so good to make money and so you keep going, wanting to get more money and more of that good feeling. You know, MRI scans have once again revealed that a winning trade activates the same areas of the brain and the same production of hormones, I think it was dopamine, as in people who take cocaine. I mean, how lucky are we traders? We don't have to spend all that money on cocaine and harm our body to get that high. We actually can get that high safely and make a lot of money at the same time. But another common trading scenario is that you say to yourself, oh, just one more trade to make maybe another nine dollars to get the bank up to a round number and then you end up losing it all and even more once again having to start building up your bank from scratch like Sisyphus. I did that too. One of the defining moments in my trading career I will never forget. I was in a $4,997 profit for the day because the DAX had just dropped like a hot potato but I wanted $5,000 well, eventually I got out at $200. It was so painful. Now, there was a few reasons why this happened and uh, why we handled those trades so badly. One might be if you're prone to be a perfectionist, and um, I certainly have perfectionist tendencies. That can lead to the trader shifting their focus from um, the results, uh, sorry, from the process to the outcome. So rather than focusing on flawless execution, they focus on getting in and out at round numbers and having a nice looking P&L or profit and loss ratio. And this is, by the way, one of the most common mistakes that traders make, that they put more importance on how much dollar profits they make and if they entered and exited at a certain point, rather than ensuring that the process of their trading activity is well executed. And to be honest, most traders that I start working with one in a hundred actually um, report, uh, record their um, quality of execution. Most traders only record the quality of their PNL. Now another influencing factor is what we call the B 
behavioral biases or as I like to call it behavioral pitfalls which are for example things like framing and anchoring now because I already had a four thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollar profit in my you know that I could see in my trading bank anything less wasn't good enough anymore whereas in all the other trades I would have been happy with two hundred or five hundred dollar profit but this is also a topic for another webinar or you can read up about framing and anchoring on my website I wrote an article about that too now my own performance coach Steve Ward from the UK thankfully put it all into perspective for me he said I actually did quite well to stick it out at a profit because he had a trader going from a 10,000 pound profit to a minus 15,000 pound loss because he wanted that 10,000 pound profit too badly so it's all relative in life isn't it now traders who experience this often feel that they're not in control that it's something that happens to them and hopefully tonight we can change that and get you back into the driver's seat by showing you why those things happen and teach you a few practical tactics and techniques on how you can manage yourself better now I'm not sure I'm sure you have seen yourself in at least a few if not all of those scenarios but don't despair what I can say wholeheartedly if that has happened to you then you are not alone because almost every other trader has to and I have worked with some amazing traders and I can tell you even those traders also make the same mistakes the difference is how they handle themselves though and how quickly they get themselves together again and they move on instead of dwelling on that last bad trade and carrying it into the future it's a difficult game trading and I find Steve Ward summed it all up nicely he said the only difference between being successful or not is knowing what to do and then doing what you know sounds so easy doesn't it now conceptually people understand trading they know all about cutting losses and letting profits run but the reality is that traders don't do that in real time in the markets and that is what Steve calls the psychological gap that is why trading psychology is so important in helping traders doing more of what they know they should be doing more of the time now Steve he only works with hedge funds with sovereign funds and last year he did a tour around the world training in the biggest funds and working with the top 1% of traders and man he's got some amazing stories to tell because he's seen it all you know and he confirmed to me that even the top traders of the world they make the same mistakes it's just what they do with those mistakes that's the difference between an amateur trader and those top traders by the way Steve has written one of the best books on trading performance uh, that I know and it's based on his work on those funds it's called high performance trading and if you go to his website highperformanceglobal.com on the resource section you can download four sample chapters to get a taste and I'm pretty sure you'll love it the reason why trading can be so tough is that up to a certain point in their career traders never explore if the habits and thought processes are productive they're not consciously aware of what causes them to display behaviors that lead to results they're not happy with so for example a friend of mine he's a business coach and we met for coffee last week and I asked him what he thinks is the biggest challenge for business owners and actually it wasn't really surprising but it's similar challenges that traders face he told me about this news agency owner he is working with at the moment and he's got a product sitting on the shelf that he bought for one dollar and he knows that in order to make a profit he needs to sell it for about a dollar sixty dollar seventy but it's not selling no one's touching it so my business coach friend recommended the news agency guy to sell it for 50 cents as a discount and just get rid of it and then put an item on the shelf that sells even if it only makes 10 cents profit on the new item it doesn't matter it's still more profitable than sitting on a one dollar product that is not shifting at all you won't be surprised mr. news agency man says he can't sell it for 50 cents because he bought it for a dollar and he can't take this big loss he can't afford to take this loss can you see his errors in thinking it's always so easy to see it in other scenarios and in other people isn't it but this decision that he made is purely emotionally driven and not rationally and it's exactly the same what traders go through in trading psychology we have to distinguish between two areas that the trader needs to work on and that by the way is the case if you want to lose weight or if you want to become a professional athlete or if you want to run a profitable news agency it's all the same principle how we behave 
the decisions we make are determined by two major causes. Traders trade their internal emotional processes, such as their expectations, their fears, or what we call internal state, rather than trading the markets. And then there are the internal cognitive processes that work against the trader. I don't know about you, but I didn't get a manual on how my brain works and how to use it, so I had to study it and retrain it. And most traders think they display a lack of discipline when they simply haven't learned how to think logically and constructively like a professional trader. And they believe they have discipline problems when, as a matter of fact, the brain plays tricks on them. They are at the mercy of thinking biases such as the regret bias or framing and anchoring, and they are not aware of it. So they don't display thinking processes that automatically and effortlessly lead to profitable trade behaviors. And once again, I've got a few articles on my website about that because it would really go beyond the scope of tonight. Let me give you an example, though. When a trader holds on to a losing trade, he does so, or she does so, <laughs> because um, they don't want to lose money, right? There's this emotional impact of what losing money means to them. Maybe to one trader it means that they will never be able to achieve their dreams if they take that loss. All they can see in that moment is this one losing trade, but they don't see the big picture of trading, that it's okay to lose a round, you can still win the game. And all they can think of is not wanting to close out that trade and take that loss, as if this were the last trade they would ever take. And they are so worried that the moment they close out this trade, that it might turn around and go back into their direction, which, by the way, is called the regret bias. But most probably this is going to happen, and it is not the point. The point is that you need to rationally assess what the probabilities of this trade are, regardless if it's going to turn around or not. What is the possible consequence of closing out at a loss versus staying in and hoping for it to reverse? Do you have enough confidence in your system and especially in yourself to get into better trades and make a good profit instead of hanging on for your dear life? Or is there now a great argument to actually reverse your trade because it has given a nice setup to the other direction? So your ability to be nimble and to think rationally about this business, business proposition, which is your losing trade, seems to be disabled and the trick is to turn it back on again by having a strategy in place that helps you to immediately switch your thought processes from fear-based thinking to the rational assessment of a situation. And I found that a major difference between profitable traders and losing traders is that the losing traders, they don't want to lose their money on this one trade, whereas the profitable traders they don't want to lose their capital and therefore close out a trade that doesn't perform straight away or it has a little loss. Can you see the difference in thinking strategies? So you can see it is the cognitively driven behavioral pitfalls and the self-defeating behaviors that are emotionally driven because losing traders simply haven't learned how to think like a trader. I mean, this is really applicable to most money matters in life and that is why most people are broke. Daniel Kahneman in his book Thinking Fast and Slow talks about this really interesting experiment that is also so applicable to the thinking mistakes traders make. He tells of customers who want to buy uh, sorry, he tells customers who want to buy a twenty five dollar product that if they drive fifteen minutes down the road to a different shop, they can get the same product for twenty dollars. So they get a five dollar savings. And not surprisingly, most customers take that up. Then he gives the same proposal to customers buying a $125 product and only a few take up this offer even though the savings is still the same, $5. The mistake people make here is that they measure the value of the $5 savings compared to the purchase price. But in both cases it is still a $5 savings and should be related to the bigger context of income and therefore taken up in both cases because that doesn't change, right? So interestingly enough, when you look at proprietary trading firms, for example, they're not so interested in your trading results, they are more interested in your trading behavior and your thinking structures because they know if you keep improving and you have the right uh, thinking processes and behavioral processes, that is the foundation for profits. And what I see often with traders is that they label everything that goes wrong in their trading with lack of discipline and they don't distinguish between different um, different patterns of behavior and they don't realize that sometimes it is just a lack of thinking skills and context. 
we are really lucky nowadays though because there has been so much research into the human mind such as what's the root cause of why people get addictive, why people find it hard to be disciplined and into many other challenges in life. And there has been especially a lot of research into how the brain impacts financial decision making, which unfortunately once again goes beyond the scope of tonight, but I hope I can share more of those in our next webinar. So tonight I will only focus on the emotionally driven so-called lack of discipline and I will talk about cognitive strategies more in a different webinar. The great thing about trading is that as long as you have enough funds in your trading bank you can always begin anew and create a whole new ending to your trading day. So with that in mind traders try to pick themselves up and promise to never ever do that same mistake again. But what is discipline? Interestingly enough, most definitions of discipline I found on the internet are somehow connected with punishment in order to enforce set rules of conduct. And this is really what most traders do. They tell themselves to suck it up and try harder next time and to not repeat the same mistakes and they try to enforce that with willpower. But I believe that most people use it more in terms of um, or use discipline more in terms of being able to follow certain rules of conduct and therefore what is apparent is that most commonly traders confuse discipline with willpower and self-control because this is how they try to make themselves not make the same mistake again. Now the definition of self-control is restraint, exercise over one's own impulses, emotions or desires. That definitely sounds like what most traders are unsuccessfully trying to do, right? They write into their journal, from now on I will be disciplined and put a big post-it note on the monitor and reciting the affirmations, be patient, don't be impulsive, stay calm and hoping that one of those will help them to just be disciplined and stop them from doing this impulsive behavior. But of course it doesn't work. So why is it that traders find it so hard to exert this level of self-control and be disciplined? And is it really discipline that separates the top 10% of traders from the rest? If you analyze the trading process, there are three steps to a trade and this is really where we look at where the self-management part comes into. The first step is analyzing the market using a well-proven trading methodology to determine how probability how uh, So the first step is analyzing the market using a well-proven trading methodology to determine high probability entry and exit points. The second part to trading is managing the trade that you're in. And then the third part is the post-trade analysis so that you can get your new learnings and understanding and perform better next time. Most traders think they just need to write a plan and follow the plan and that is the secret to trading success. If it only were this that simple because the real challenge lies in the ability to follow a plan. Because one of the main reasons why traders never succeed is that they don't realize that all of these three steps are totally different from each other. The first part, the analysis part, is really the easy one. Trading is not rocket science. Technical analysis, fundamental analysis, we can all learn how to do that. You apply your rules of conduct and mark your entry and exit points. It is all purely logical and rational, once again providing the fact that you have a proven trading methodology that works. Because you do need to understand how the markets work, what makes price, m price move, and if you don't understand what price action means or recognize the natural rhythm and patterns of the markets or whatever methodology you are applying, all the psychology in the world is useless. It is not going to help you make and keep your profits. But in the end, whilst it is part of the equation, it is not only about intellectual ability or how well you can analyze a chart, otherwise there would be many more successful traders around, right? In the trade management part, you need to be able to execute your analysis flawlessly and that is the part where your psychology comes into play. That is where usually the problem lies for traders. And the only time when the self-management aspect is important before entering the trade is when you have exited a trade on a profit and got out too early, for example, and you feel this pinch of regret. Because what do we know most traders do when they feel this regret? It's an uncomfortable feeling and they try to escape it. And how? By getting back into the trade. And that makes them feel better in the very moment. But by then it's usually too late and they end up in, in a loss giving back the profits they made in the previous trade. Most traders actually experience regret as a heaviness in their chest and also get a little bit of a stiff neck. 
um, that is the moment when you need to go out, go for a run, spend time with your family and put it all back into perspective again. It's just a trade, you know, it's not the end of the world. Once you're back in neutral and you can make rational trading decisions again, then you go back to your trading screen. Because think about it, what is really holding you back in trading? What is it that keeps you repeating the same mistakes over and over again, no matter how much you promise yourself to be disciplined and to follow your rules? What's holding you back from changing? That is the part that occurs during your trade management. Because the trade management part has nothing to do with logic. That has already all happened in the analysis part. This is the area of trading where traders battle with their emotions and their unproductive behavior the most, where they fall down under the uncomfortable feelings such as stress, anxiety, fear, disappointment, regret. And what we humans are genetically wired to do is avoid those almost painful feelings. And in the strategy we apply to avoid those painful feelings, that's where the key to stop self-sabotaging behaviors lies. Because for everything in life, whatever we do, we do have a strategy and that's usually a subconscious strategy. And what you need to do is you need to uncover your subconscious strategy on either making you feel one way or the other and see if that's working for you to get what you want in life. And if not, you need to change that strategy. Now, to start off with, I would actually um, recommend that you start investigating two main areas. Number one, think about what's at the core of your trading. The core of trading is money. And therefore, it is important to investigate what your relationship with money is and how early experiences might have shaped what money means to you. Is it something that has always been elusive to you? Um, is it easy for you to um, make money but hard to keep it? Um, are you a habitual saver? Do you hate paying bills and parting with your money? For you it might be hard to take a loss because you don't want to part with your money. Or are you a spender? Do you spend your money as soon as you get your hands on it? Do you even spend more money than you earn? How do you feel when you actually have savings in your bank or cash in your wallet? You might be a trader who has too many positions open and over leveraged because you don't really value money. How would those behaviors and those early experiences impact your trading behaviors. Now the second area that is important for you to investigate is how do you currently deal with uncomfortable feelings such as fear, regret, tension and so on. In my opinion this is one of the most important things for you to learn. I mean most people they stuff down their uncomfortable emotions with chicken and chips or alcohol and drugs. It's so much easier than confronting what is really going on. The thing is though that if the emotions can't get out to be dealt with they will manifest in bad trading decisions. And how can you learn to be okay with feelings, those fears and tensions which are actually inevitable in trading? We all have the urge to take money off the table too early, but it is in the end who has the strongest mind and has learned to resist those urges who will make the biggest profits. And that is where the thinking strategies that help you to manage your urges come in. I'm sure you all have heard about the marshmallow experiment about instant gratification. If not, I think I have an article with it, um, with a little YouTube video as well on my website. In a nutshell, the kids that were able to resist eating the marshmallows straight away, they applied a strategy to divert their focus and attention from the object of desire by not looking at it, by you know looking around in the room, um, singing, whatever it took. Whereas the other kids, they didn't think at all, they simply instinctively gave into their emotions and stuffed the marshmallow into their mouth as soon as the door closed. Um, so yeah, once again, check it out on, on YouTube. It's some, a really great experiment and very applicable for traders. I mean, let's be honest though. Another problem is that the market teaches us not to take our losses. I mean, too often, I know that for myself, too often we get away with hanging on to a losing trade and it eventually does turn around. You know, nine out of 10 times it, it, it works out fine. And we are lucky to get out maybe at break even or with a small profit. But the one time when we are not lucky, that's when the loss turns into a blowout trade because we don't really know how to manage it and it ends up eating most of your trading bank. Now the biggest problem here is that too many traders attribute this to skill rather than luck. So you know what's really interesting? One golden rule in professional trading firms is for example to never let a trade run into a bigger loss than the profit you took. So if you made a $1,000 profit and it ran into a $1,200 loss first, 
it's worth nothing because your performance in terms of your timing wasn't great and your profit loss ratio is too risky and therefore your performance needs improvement. Uh, this measurement is um, by the way called sharp ratio. And I also found that having a long streak of profitable trades can actually work against the trader. It's almost like the taking losses muscles haven't been exercised and that makes it so much harder to take a loss when that winning streak ends. So I hope by now you can see why the most difficult thing in trading is not about understanding how to apply technical analysis and, um, and interpreting fundamental facts, neither what makes the market move. What is it likely to uh, what is likely to happen next? Uh, this is the much easier part of trading. The biggest challenge lies in finding out what causes you to behave the way you do and what are the patterns that help you to predict what you're going to do next. And once you're aware of it, that is when you can actually start having a choice and be in control of your behavior rather than your behaviors being in control of you. As a trader, you are not really trading the market. You are trading what we call the internal state. Your beliefs, your perceptions of the world, the limitation and current challenges you are faced with, um, you are on other people's expectations, your thoughts and your fears. And as you can see in our next slide, this internal state is driv driving your trading behavior. And all of that is ultimately what subconsciously runs your automatic responses unless you start working with it consciously. And the way to start working with it consciously is to learn to identify and understand how this internal state impacts your trading behavior, how it makes you jump impulsively into trades or how it makes you hang on to losing trades. And what I do when I work with my traders, I look at what is behind their behavior of not being disciplined or lack of confidence or inconsistency in their profits. What is it that makes them think and feel the way they do? Uh, what better thinking and feeling strategies can we implement? So this is what I call the context analysis of my traders. So I look at my trader and where he or she is in the context of their trading life and um, do you have a trading system that's already working? What's your trading room like? I had a trader who was trading off his 15 inch laptop so we got him a monitor which made all the difference in his trading. So it can be little things like uh, when you have a car, that is a great example what uh, Steve Ward taught me. When you have a car, it is sometimes just one little screw that is missing, yet your whole car doesn't work. Or we all know if you have run out of fuel, even if everything else is in top shape, your car won't drive. All you need to do is add fuel and your Ferrari drives beautifully again. And sometimes it's the same with traders. Sometimes it's just one little thing that needs to be adjusted one little thing that is standing between you and your trading profits. And for me, it's like a chess game, like a mathematical equation. It is so super interesting to find out what is that one little thing for you. And then let's try new approaches, implement new support mechanisms into your trading life that will help you to change your results. Now, trading itself is really easy. It's all the other stuff that we have to deal with as human beings that make trading so difficult. So your beliefs, your values, your personal needs, how you deal with emotions, all of these also impact your trading decisions. So what do you believe about yourself as a trader? Um, do you believe that money is evil and rich people are bad people? Um, if you look at your values, um, is money important to you? Is trading important to you? Or do you feel that you are neglecting your family and you feel guilty? You know, all those things. Do you feel that trading satisfies or your needs or um, does it not satisfy? Do you have a high need to socialize and so you need to find a solution for that? You see, it's not good or bad. It's the same for everyone. We all have our problems and our challenges. It's just simply about how you deal with it. That really, it, it everything can be solved. So, for example, if you have a family that doesn't support you in your trading endeavor, um, if they're afraid that you ruin yourself and they think that you uh, you have a gambling addiction, that can really be disastrous for a trader, but it can also be managed and dealt with so that you have the opportunity to be who you are and to perform at your best no matter what the circumstances are. And all those factors need to be taken seriously and can again, once again, have a massive impact on your discipline and ultimately on your trading results, unless you learn how to manage yourself, no matter the circumstances. So let me give you another example of the thinking processes. If you 
are a trader, um, so let's say you're in a, in a um, losing trade, right? And then you know you should get out of your losing trade. And you say to yourself, I'm hanging on to this trade because if I get out now, I lose half of my trading bank. And most probably the trade will turn around the moment I exit. And then you say to yourself, hmm, okay, but all of that is not the point. That is the wrong reason to justify hanging on to this trade. It makes me tired, exhausted, frustrated, and I miss out on other opportunities where I could have doubled my profits if I hadn't stuck to this trade like a blowfly. Okay, so what does my analysis tell me? Let's go back to my trading system. Is there still a reason to stay in this trade? No? Then I should be out of the trade and look for a new opportunity. And where are the other opportunities where my focus would be more productive? It's so much easier to um, cut out of one losing trade if you see a new opportuni opportunity setting up. Now, can you see how you can actually be in charge of yourself and how you can redirect your thinking processes into a new thought process? Simply by putting things to perspective and by knowing what to do and what to think and practicing that. So being able to make profits in trading is simply a result. It is a result of how you behave and your behaviors are largely subconsciously driven by your experiences in life, what you believe about yourself in trading, what is important to you in life and it's also a great reflection of how you feel about yourself at any point in life and so on. So being a consistently profitable trader who can live off their trading profits is not something that happens to you. It is something that you consciously create by aligning each piece of your life with trading at the time and using practical strategies and techniques to actually implement that. So you can see at the beginning there's a lot to consider but all of this will soon become second nature. And as I mentioned above, the main reason why traders don't succeed is that they unconsciously display behaviors driven by habits and thought processes that they are not consciously aware of. And these unconsciously driven behaviors, they lead to results the trader is not happy with and to the feeling of not being in control and that some outside force makes them do whatever that they do that causes losses. And the crazy thing is that this is so simple to fix. As yes, it does take time to investigate and investigate and um, work to create new better strategies, but it can be fixed. Now the only difference between successful and unsuccessful traders is that the successful traders have learned how to manage themselves in the face of all the challenges of the market in their lives and in the face of all the discomfort and the uncertainty that comes with it. Successful traders, even if they are aware of it or not, they have the ability to detect early and respond accordingly to their internal state at each moment rather than being at the mercy of knee-jerk reactions to subconscious fears such as fear of missing out, fear of not being good enough, the need to be perfect and so on. All of these feelings, they don't feel good and as a result we try to avoid them instead of learning how to manage ourselves in the face of it. But you see successful traders, they have learned uh, not to give in to those feelings but to just simply go back and focus on the markets. You know what I found really interesting is when I start working with traders, they think they know what the issues are. They say, I overtrade or they say, I have a hard time accepting losses and hold on to it until it hits the ouch spot. But these are only symptoms. They're not the real issues, not the real cause. In order to be able to change compulsive behavior, you need to understand why you do that, what causes that behavior. Because without this understanding, you are destined to repeat those issues over and over and over again. So for example, if you look at people who are compulsive hoarders, you know the people who have the houses so full of stuff that they can't even move anymore, they are often people who have experienced a great loss and haven't dealt with the grief. So you can't make them throw away anything. Even if it is way beyond use by date or broken beyond repair, their subconscious will resist it with all they have as a protective mechanism out of fear until the experience of loss has been dealt with. I know this is a bit heavy stuff, but not to worry, it does need to get that heavy in trading, but I hope it illustrates my point. And once all that investigative work has been done, successful traders are able to recognize subtle nuances in how they feel in the very first instance. They are able to recognize immediately when the feelings of discomfort are sneaking up. And when those feelings of discomfort are sneaking up, they have learned not to have those automatic fear reactions, but to simply understand it and be okay with it and to then apply a conscious intended way of reacting. That is the only difference. And then you don't need to exert willpower or suck it up. It all happens automatically because you have suitable thinking processes and behavioral strategies in place. 
So, for, exa so for example, I know that after having had a really good run of profitable trades, I get the superwoman syndrome, as I call it, which is, I know, the opposite of um, um, feeling of discomfort, but this is also a problem. Uh, and that is a familiar emotion. I recognize it when it's creeping up on me, and I know that when I'm on this emotional high, so if you look at a pendulum, you look at the extreme areas of feeling totally distressed and depressed to the other extreme of feeling absolutely high and happy. And when you're in this happy state and this high state, your brain is actually not able to filter through negative information. It's like, you know, being in love when you only see the good things about the person and your brain filters out all the idiosyncrasies that later <laughs> annoy you. And it's the same in trading. Even if you see the signs why you should stay out of this trade, you will ignore it. You find a reason to ignore it. And then after taking your loss and doing your post-trade analysis with your tail between your legs, you say, oh my God, why did I take this trade? I certainly, this certainly wasn't a high probability trade. And I can see in hindsight now that it, it really wasn't a good setup, but at the time it looked so good. So I know now when I'm in the superwoman space that I make low probability trading decisions. And I have a strategy that gets me back into neutral before I let myself lose on the markets again. And it's the same when you're um, de feeling defeated and depressed. Your brain will only fil filter through um, negative emotions and negative signs and this is when traders um, keep <laughs> when traders keep getting into bad trades as well so um, it's really important that you stay neutral once again i have an article about that on my website if you're interested in more so i hope it all makes sense if not drop me an email and i'm happy to clarify that to you uh, for you okay so the question is of course now how do you get to that point of neutral how do you get to that point of understanding yourself and being in control and being at the cause of your behavior and having actually a choice in your behavior as well. And what I usually do is I work with my traders through a three-step process. And the first part of the process is to develop self-awareness. Now you need to observe yourself, find your behavioral patterns and automatic responses, keep a journal with the following ob uh, observations. When the trade behaved like that, I noticed that I felt like that. No judgment, no evaluation, simply noticing. And usually traders have only one or two behaviors that if they learn to eliminate them would make all the difference to their trading results. Learn about your self-talk and the images you create in your mind's eye when it comes to cutting out a losing trade. For example, um, traders often imagine in their mind's eye how the trade turns around the second they exited the trade at a painful loss and how they could have gotten out at a profit of the century. And that is what stops them from pressing that mouse button and taking that loss. Yet, it is obviously nothing but deluded fantasy. It has nothing to do with rational, logical thinking. Investigate what is your biological state. You start slouching into an already defeated posture. When you slouch, your intestines get squashed and your body goes into an energy preservation mode. Um, do you stop breathing? You know, that causes your body to panic, to produce cortisol and will impair your brain function apart from the negative effect it can have on your heart. Um, did you drink enough water and, and have good nutrition or did you forget to drink because you were so focused on trying to fix up the trade? All of those things can actually cause stress and that also impairs the ability of your brain to function at its highest level. And all of that really leads to unnecessary stress reaction and severely impair your ability to make logical productive trading decisions. Sometimes a glass of water is the answer, nothing more. Or do you feel discomfort first, followed by thoughts? Or do you think a thought first, followed by an emotional reaction? So start investigating your habitual way of being and um, understanding yourself. You will have internal behavioral patterns and you will have to learn to recognize them setting up just like you would do with um, chart patterns. And then find out why you behave like that. What's the cause? Where else in your life do you behave like that? So for example, is your self-destructive behavior driven by the need to be perfect or not wanting to disappoint the people that you love or even despair because you really need the money and you can't afford to lose what you've got? For example, I hear so often, if I get out of this trade now, I lose half of my account. Now this is really not a good reason to stay in a losing trade because you could lose all your account, we know that. And it also shows me what the trader believes about their ability to trade well enough to recover that loss. And as a third 
step you need to create a new mental strategy on how to manage yourself. Create an alternative way of behaving that you can train and practice as soon as you feel the indicators of old sabotaging thoughts and feelings creeping up. This will help you to manage your internal state ahead of time and therefore make better trading decisions. So for example, I had a client once when I was starting out in coaching and she was already 34 and was still biting her nails and she hated it but she just couldn't stop herself. And we found out that sticking her finger into her mouth gave her a sense of comfort and security. And especially when she was highly stressed, it was like a tension relief for her. So she had to learn to manage um, those emotions by finding better ways to deal with her stress, like going for a run, for example, or um, eating a carrot. We also did a lot of work in finding out what the trigger was for her to bite her nails. And what we found out was that she had quite brittle nails. And as soon as they were a bit rough, she would start biting. So in order to manage that, we made sure she always had a little nail file on her to smoothen the nails and also she started having professional manicures which helped enormously. And once the finger was in her mouth, it was too late, so we had to create strategies that changed her behavior right in the moment when she felt this urge to bite her nails creeping up. Or um, We also created an alternative um, behavior for her, so instead of moving her hand to her mouth, she moved her hand to her earlobe and played with her ear um, with her earrings. So we can pretty much apply the same process for you in your trading. And of course, you must already have a methodology that's working and that is only limited by your own self-sabotaging behavior. Otherwise, there's no point to go down that path as yet. And once you have a good understanding of the markets and your methodology, your profits and loss is simply a reflection, an expression of how well you know yourself and therefore how well you're able to manage yourself then there is no need to exert willpower to control your actions as you now are in a place where you work with your emotions instead of against them to create the outcome you want. And the last step of the trading process is of course your post-trade analysis and evaluation. Evaluate how well you followed your system and managed the trade, but also how you felt, what made you behave the way you behaved, the behaviors that led to profits as much as the behaviors that led to losses. And if you are able to distinguish between tho both, you now have the understanding of yourself and the awareness to be able to start eliminating these behaviors that lead to losses and do more of the behaviors that lead to profits. All right, as a summary, these are steps that you can take to developing the profitable trader's mindset. Now, you need to have your trading system, but you also need to know how to do your risk management. Um, when I start out working with my traders, they have to fill in a business plan and most of them they put in like a 1 or 2% um, risk that they're willing to take. Then I ask them, so why 1 or 2% and most of them say, oh, I just read that somewhere, but they don't really know why. There's a reason why, because if you only have 1 or 2% losses, you can lose, so let's use a 1% loss, you can lose 100 times before your trading bank is gone. Now, if you have 100 losses in a row, there's really something wrong with your trading system, right? So then you maybe should look at your trading system again. And then what I also found is that a lot of traders, they actually, they don't follow their 1 or 2% risk management rule. They have 3, 4%, 5%. And then I say, hey, why do you have 5% loss here? And I say, well, because of my trading system, I needed to put my stop loss here underneath that low and it didn't work with 1 or 2% or my trading bank is too small for 1 or 2% risk and I say why did you put it in the business plan then? So the reason for the business plan is to follow it and to have it sound so that you can be successful but the way you manage your business plan is worth nothing. Then you have to take a connection between how you feel and the actions you take. So every action that you take is most probably um, determined by how you felt and what you thought and said to yourself. Once you understand this connection, then you can create new thoughts, pro thought processes um, that lead to better emotions and hence lead to better actions and better results. And in order to have that, you need to practice your self-awareness, uh, practice meditation, mindfulness, and be really aware of everything that you do, everything that you say, that you feel, write it down. You don't need to do that your whole life, you know, you just need to do that for a period of time until you have your patterns um, understood. And once you understand your um, subconscious and automatic patterns, then you can do something about it and change your trading behavior. And it's also interesting, what's your self-perception as a trader? 
do you look in the mirror and you say, yes, I'm a trader? Or do you feel like, oh, I'm not really a trader? And when people ask you, so what do you do? You don't want to say that you're a trader because it feels uncomfortable. So this is also really important just to notice because that will give us an idea about your beliefs and maybe even about your values. And maybe there is some work to be done on that level. And then really important, shift your focus from profit and loss to good process. As long as you have a sound trading methodology and you focus on following that to the point on good process, the profits will come. Don't even look at how much money you've made. Just look at your exit point and see how much money you've made afterwards. That is so much more important. Identify what are your good habits and repeat them. Make do more of them rather than trying to fight yourself and trying to eliminate your bad habits. Um, take one bad habit at a time to eliminate, but really focus on um, repeating your good habits. And in order to do that, you uh, do visualization techniques and exposure training. So visualization where you um, go back and you visualize and imagine how you would have handled the trade in a much better professional way. And exposure training, like I practice um, having a strong mind by doing yoga, having cold showers. So doing stuff that keeps me um, uncomfortable as well. And I test myself and I like new challenges and hiking mountains because that really keeps me strong and keeps me, um, keeps me, yeah, keeps, gives, gives me a strong mind and keeps me also nimble. Now, if you want to be on a trading journey with an increasing equity curve and not the one where you make money and then give it all back, you have to confront your issues in order to get your account going. But what most traders do is they try to understand more about the markets, learn new indicators, get a new trading guru because that is so much easier. It certainly has its relevance too, but most traders don't look in the mirror at all and that is why they th stay stuck in the rut. And they tell themselves to suck it up, to try harder next time and not to repeat the same mistake. And I sincerely hope that you now have better tools in your toolbox and you have a better opportunity to learn to manage yourself and as a result become a better trader. And on that note, I want to thank you all and I hand over to Devin.